In this episode, I'm going to go back in time. Welcome to part two of the Myford series. With another aerial view of the surroundings, it's time to take a closer look. Welcome to the Myford story. As the camera flies into the factory, I'm going to begin by showing some photographs from the archive. Sit back and relax, it's time to take a trip back in time. Some of these photographs were very old and taken during World War II. I've left most of the photographs in the album. These two are from 1943. They're not in any particular order, but they do show the development from treadle or foot-operated lathes to the early bench-mounted models that could be driven by an electric motor. And here you see such an electric motor connected to a counter shaft. By editing a previous image, I can show you an early bench-mounted model. In 1934, a man called Cecil Moore started the Myford Engineering Company. And initially, he rented a room in a large mill in Beeston, Nottinghamshire. The operation was a success. He ended up renting most of the mill. The Myford Engineering Company made quite a large range of lathes, and not all of them were aimed at model engineers. This photograph shows a small Myford lathe from 1941. Very compact, great quality as you would expect from Myford. Simple, robust and easy to use. Here's a brochure for a Myford ML10. These proved to be very popular and many fine models have been built using them. Some Myford lathes were quite a lot larger than an ML10. This Myford lathe is called a Tempest. But here is the industry standard. The Myford ML7 3.5 inch centre height heavy duty lathe. These ML7 models were available with or without a gearbox. The gearboxes fit an ML7 or Super 7 lathe. Coming up to date now, here's a gearbox fitted to a modern Super 7. From the past to the present, and I'm in the Myford shop. This Super 7 lathe has a really useful accessory. It's called a DRO, or Digital Readout. As not everyone knows what these are, I will explain. The three axes of the DRO connect to the parts that are moved by the three handles on the lathe. This is the cross slide handle that moves the cutting tool back and forth. This handle controls the longitudinal feed of the saddle itself, but there's also a DRO on this, which is the compound slide. And as you change the position of any of the axes, you always know exactly where you are relative to the position of the work. This is what is known as a three-axis DRO, a three-axis digital readout. Personally, I've never trusted the marks on hand wheels, but with one of these, there can be no argument. The best way to commence the learning process with a DRO is to just wind the handles and see what happens. I'm going to show a very simple turning operation. This piece of small diameter rusty mild steel is quite long, and one end has already been reduced in size. The cutting tool that I'm using is not a new one, but without any difficulty at all, I take a facing cut across the end. I normally wouldn't do this even if the full diameter of this work was gripped in the chuck. I would expect some chatter. A standard Myford spindle is quite well thought out. It's got a taper plane bearing at the front and two ball racers at the rear. To turn down a piece of bar at this diameter, I would normally use a centre drill to make a centre hole in the end and then use a live centre. Once I'd finished the turning operation, as I remove the piece of bar from the chuck, you can clearly see that that part was of a lesser diameter. This clip shows the other end of the bar that I've just turned on the Myford. I'm quite surprised at the quality of the surface finish on this piece of bar, considering how it was turned. Even the swarf in the chip tray looks good. All of the Super 7 range of Myford lathes are available with different options to suit the application. Time now for a quick fly through the factory. In the next episode, I will be spending some time in here, giving you an insight into how the Myford Super 7s are made. All of these lathes are built by skilled British craftsmen. Although most of the components for these lathes are made within a 10 mile radius of Halifax, certain parts are machined in-house. Here's a milling machine and a very old surface grinder, made by Myford when they were in Nottingham. 
And here is a Myford Super 7 in the factory workshop. I'm going to take a very quick look at just a few of the comprehensive range of accessories. I will cover the accessories in depth in a later episode. As I did quite a lot of work on my old ML7R, I recognised some of these parts on the shelf. These are vertical milling attachments. They bolt onto the cross slide and allow you to use the Super 7 lathe as a milling machine. These parts are quite easy to recognise. They are saddle hand wheels, painted in the popular Myford colours. These fancy gears and levers are part of the Myford back gear system. I'm not going to spend too much time going through what's in all the boxes as you can see, but I do want to say something about these. They are the tailstocks, and in my opinion, probably the best tailstock design in the world. The entire range of Myford Super 7 lathes can be mounted as you need them to be. For instance, you can have one of these at the back of it, a special splashback with a shelf, even complete with somewhere to keep your tailstock attachments. That's it for this episode. In the next one, I will be in the factory.